We talk about this and talk about that. Shut up, stop running out, let's talk about facts. Live a little, laugh a lot, let's have some fun. Listen to Gina, she'll tell you how it's done. Did you know? Good to know. What did you know? Well, now you know. Never know what's gonna happen on the No Filter Show. Loud and proud, funny and cool. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule. Be the change. Be the change. Come watch the No Filter Show. Welcome, everybody, to the No Filter Show with me, Gina Knowles. Thanks for watching as usual. And this week we're back on the conversation of Hurricane Dorian, which hit our Bahama land September 3rd with a Category 6 hurricane and totally wiped out our Abacos as well as Freeport Island. So, you know, I, today we're bringing on the new minister who has been uh, appointed as the Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness, Management and Construction, Mr. Iram Lewis. Very excited to have him to figure out exactly, I'd like to know what is his role, what the plan is for the future, because like we said before, this is not a sprint, but a marathon. And we have a lot of people coming in from all over the world helping us out. So I'd like to ask from the horse's mouth, what the plan is, what we're gonna do. And of course, we'll speak to him a little bit about how my foundation, the Head Knowles Foundation can help out. We've been working together very nicely as teams, uh, along with the government and NEMA. So we'd like to see what the plan is and what the short-term go goal is, as well as the long-term. We will be right back. That's her only rule. The No Filter Show is proudly sponsored by Another Production, BAF Financial and Insurance, Battery and Tire Alignment Specialist, Bliss Wax Boutique, Checkers Cafe, Dairy Queen, Live to Fish, Mesa Grill, Milo Butler and Sons, Pop Star Entertainment, Oasis Shopping, Boost Academy, Island Game, and Quality Home Center. Hi everybody, good afternoon. My name is Mitsunori Chikawa. Welcome to Latin Del Restaurant. Today we prepare a hamachi jalapeno tiradito. On my dishes, I try to, to mix different flavors, spicy, sour, sweet, to make a aumami flavor. After putting the hamachi in the plate, we need to season it with the Himalayan salt, a little pinch of black pepper. Then, to have a fresh flavor, we put uh, some To make a spicy flavor, we, we put a roaster jalapeno pepper. We use a special sauce, the name is jalapeno ponzu. It's a half part of the ponzu sauce and a half part of jalapeno dressing. And finally, we put a, some topping of the fried leek in each Hamachi slices. Here we are, okay? So, this is Hamachi spicy jalapeno. Welcome. This is heavy. Yes, boy. No, no, no. Oh. Biggest fish on the 
about the yeah. That's my fish. Drop, drop it back. Why you want to catch a fish today? Another one, maybe? Another one. We already found some fish, but we're going to find some more. more. Yeah. Two more. Plan the best day of your life today. Check us out at www.live2.fish or on Facebook, Instagram, and TripAdvisor. Email us at info at live2.fish. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show with me, Gina Knowles. And as promised, I have the Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, Mr. Iram Lewis. Welcome. Thank you, Gina. Very big title. Very big title. I know it's a lot. I can't remember it. <laughs> so I brought you here today because we need, I thought it was very important. A lot of people ask me questions on the street, and I always say I want to have the horse's mouth here with me. So we let everybody know exactly what your role is, what this big title is about. And, of course, I'm going to have to bring it up because it's me. I don't understand why they didn't give you this position six months ago, June 1st, when hurricane season was coming. So tell me what this big title is. Well, first of all, let me say publicly that I um, want to thank the Prime Minister for the confidence that he's reposing me to even offer me um, this position. Um, he saw talent that I have, some that I bring to the table to make a difference, and he's also created this ministry to give spe a specific focus um, on, on, on disasters. And it's not only natural disasters, but disasters. And um, the question may have been asked, why wasn't this ministry created a long time ago? Um, this ministry is very essential. Um, as part of the ministry's name, um, Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, all of it does not relate to Dorian, all does not relate to Francis or Jane or Matthew or Joaquin, but it came as a result of what happened during those catastrophic um, incidents. And it's getting worse. And it's, ge it's getting worse. So um, I wish, yeah, all of us wish that that um, previous administration would have thought about it earlier. But the fact is, um, because of the intensity of Dorian, and we believe that is not our last, um, they are now superstorms. Um, okay. it, it is very good to see that specific focus is being given. And again, disaster preparedness. Um, that is very important. You prepare for what is to come. You put mitigating plans in, 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 in place prior to. Um, you have, you know exactly what you need to do instantly in terms of urgent response, immediate response. You have your, your um, foreign aid or even local stage at, in safe zones. So as soon as the all clear is given, they, can, they can be ready to come into rescue or, or, or bring um, food supply, basic essentials. Um, management, how do we manage the process after the disaster itself, or even during? How do we communicate with those who may be in distress? How do we get a news out, out to our, our general population as to what's going on? How do we stay in touch with NEMA and, and our, our various EOCs? We have to manage that process. And then, of course, as is clearly indicated by Dorian, who you're going to need a lot of reconstruction and moving forward. Now, we cannot reconstruct the way we used to. Um, so strict attention will be paid to the Bahamas Building Code. And is I, it and changing? I, well, the code must be reinforced and then enforced. Right. Because one of the issues that we have right now, the Bahamas Building Code, is one of the most stringent codes we have in the Caribbean. Right. Very good. The problem is Everybody enforcement. Is doing it. Enforcement. Um, yeah, one or two persons slip through, the, through, through the, the, the gap, and it's obvious based on the when you go and you do a post mortem of the destruction of the buildings. As an architect, and um, I was able to go on site and insta instantly recognize weak spot. You know, they said the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Right. I was able to saw weakness in some of the buildings. So I surmise this now, e even in terms of, of cold re um, reinforcement, to pass on uh, um, to the persons who will be responsible for that. And, and by the way, I do have a meeting um, planned for the 21st of this month with persons from the architect's board the engineers board, um, Ministry of Works, and maybe one or two executives from the Contractors Association who would just um, sit on this commission to review the building code with a view of, of reinforcement and see how we can modify it um, um, to protect us in, in, in the future. And also to help us 
um, source a lot of inspectors because there's a shortage of inspectors um, um, in the country. Now I saw Abaco, Grand Bahama, there's just a, so a shortage. So we can, can rely on those related industries to somehow form a commission or a group where we can ensure that the construction is properly policed. I believe in the long run we'll be much better off. What are the steps now we're getting people out of the shelters? <clears throat> well, and I'm glad to say shelters because persons are now have moved from shelters now to, to dwelling. Um, there, there is a family relief center. Um, Abaco is more critical than Grand Bahama. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a family relief center that is designed for Abaco. Ground has been cleared. Um, the, the, the ports have been identified and is by no, no way a tent city. These are dome structured resilient hard structures that is uh, some 20 feet in diameter, some 400 square feet, big enough for a two bedroom, um, a bathroom, storage facilities, um, windows, doors, all secured. And, and that is going to be, um, that first center is going to be reloc located in Spring City um, near Marsh Harbor um, to house persons, some evacuees who would have lost everything. And, and, and then also part of the workforce to rebuild. Right. Masha would also be housed there. Um, so, so all of the evacuees, we're making preparation to have them return. Because people want to go home. Yes. They want to get out of the shelter. They want to go home. Last week yeah. I, I went to, to Grand Bahama McLean Sound. That was pretty much decimated. Persons that want to be in their property, they're putting up tents. Yeah. And they're sleeping. It, it's something that makes you feel at yeah. ease yeah. when you're yeah. in your yeah. own, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, your own space. So we are aggressively, aggressively uh, um, 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 uh, embarking on, on, on that initiative to ensure that persons are returned back home. Um, it, it, it does so, so many other things. You have a, your workforce there, you have people there, and of course you have a chance now to, to um, uh, be, be the catalyst for the community, for the rebirth of the community. Right. Okay. Hold that point. So we're going to go to commercial break. We're here with Iron Lewis, and he's letting us know the update on the disaster of Hurricane Dorian. We'll be right back. That's her only rule. Here's to all the early morning breakfasts. To the last minute surprises. And a new friend for life. The year the sparks flew and we said, I do. Here's to the biggest table on the street when family and friends come together. Milo Butler, your neighborhood store, a family tradition. Hey, hey boo, what's up? Right, yeah. You still going to the event? Yeah, I order my dress right now. Let me call you back. Okay, good. Welcome back to the No Filter Show with me, Gina Nolds, and I'm still here with Iram Lewis, who is the Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction. So, I want to ask you now, when it comes to the NGOs that are not only uh, from the private sector here in the Bahamas, as well as international, can you let me know how does that relationship go exactly? Because this is the first time something so big has happened. People from all around the world, everybody has stepped up. Tell me, what is the protocol of them coming into the country and you determining who's allowed to do what, go where, and so forth? Well, um, uh, we, we are receiving a lot of international humanitarian um, aid. Um, it's from the onset, the U.S. Coast Guard was here. That was, that was the first NGO to arrive mm -hmm. because they were part of, of, of the rescue team. And in fact, they I think one, one of their Hercules or their um, Osprey helicopters went into into certain areas before the all-clear was given. Yes. Um, so they were they were first responders. And um, of course, the Red Cross is here. Um, the the um, USAID here. Um, um, yes. Uh, uh, um, Core. Core is here. The Samaritan's Purse. They are here to the Grand Foundation doing a wonderful job and, and I think come and register with NEMA. Um, it, it's a simple process. You, you're here um, as a humanitarian NGO to assist with the rescue and recovery and getting us back to some sense of, no, of normalcy. 
I think too that NEMA has now put in place where you can go to their website and actually sign up. Absolutely. And I remember Ocha saying in one of the meetings that what they, what they could do is, so in the future, there's a ready clearance list on who's Absolutely. allowed in and out of the country Absolutely. because I know that some people was coming and you would like, um, who are you? Because we do know the big names, but then anybody, you know, I, I, I tell them they're third world countries, but we're two and a half. Yeah. I tell them don't mix us up because it's anybody ain't coming in here now. <laughs> so next thing is with the people who are watching around the world and they want to help and want to donate, which site or where should they go to look up and who can they give to and whatnot? They can, it, um, I'm go to NEMA directly. Um, of course, foundation like yours, Gina, you can, you can um, also... Um, um, foundation. Um, yes, all. yes. And, and there are various bodies. A lot of the churches um, are, are pretty much um, a part of this initiative. You can just contact them. But once you contact NEMA and, and large organizations like Head and Olds and, 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 and some of the, um, even the Bahamas Christian Council, mm -hmm. um, th those are uh, avenues to get in to, to assist. And yes, you're right. We, we, our borders are open. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't vet who's coming in. Because you do, you, I, I am convinced that the vast majority of those coming, those foreign NGOs are here to help, but you have one or two storm chasers. I was gonna say, not uh, everybody's good. You have one or two storm chasers. And, and, and so, of course, we have to, to be mindful of, of security. Um, and even if the goods are coming in, it's the onus is on us to inspect it to ensure that there are no data of expiration, that all the medical supplies that you use, good, um, even some of the clothing. We just want to make sure that our people, once they, are, they, they know that aid is coming, they're giving the best of the best. So right now, in this moment, what do you think for yourself has been the most rewarding part of having this position or the worst part? Well, the most rewarding part is that we, we get a chance to start fresh, start new. Um, Dorian has, has created a paradigm shift. This is a defining moment in the history of the Bahamas. And just be put in this position to, to be a part of it, as a part of a team, not as a as a as a czar, that person that's been referring referred to, just as the head of a, of, of a ministry and, and an authority that, that will be empowered to make swift decisions without having to go through all of the layers of bureaucracy that, that we have we are faced with. Um, so so th that is, is exciting. Um, I was recently appointed a permanent secretary, Mr. Carl Smith, um, who formed the, the, name, the framework for NEMA. Um, so again, this, this ministry is pretty much uh, was made for him. Was uh, it Smith been? retired? He was, he was recently retired, but he, no, no, no. He's supposed is, to start his retirement. He's supposed to start his retirement. But he yes. didn't even get. He didn't even start his retirement. Right. He, he got retired. Like two weeks away or something. And, and, no, in fact, the weekend because right after the hurricane, he was on the ground. Right. By no, the way, this is, he's definitely made for this. Yeah, yeah, he's made for this. So, so again, um, part of the challenge is, I, I suppose, the expectation yes. of our people. You know, we want that, that microwave. Okay, you're going to rebuild. When are we going to start? Exactly. Where are my houses? Uh, we, we, we need to put in road. Where's the gun? But, but in order to, to get all of that, we have to form strategies. Um, there, there are priority points that we must focus on. Communities have been destroyed. Every community must be rebuilt. Families have been displaced. Every family must return home. Person lost their job. Every worker must be employed. Um, some of the uh, health care facilities was destroyed. Every person must have a right to health care facilities. Um, communities need to be clean. Infrastructure need to be up and running. And that's critical because if the seaports and airports are not up and running to receive good and the road goods and the road network to, to get those goods to the people or where they need to go, it's not up and running, then we're in trouble. So paramount um, um, to all of this, we must have those um, ports of entries up and running um, regulated, secured, so that we can receive goods and we can distribute, and then we can now go into our, our mass re, um, uh, reconstruction. Well, that's the thing is, I think that we as a people are very impatient. And um, I, me being very, very involved in what you are doing, what Nima's doing, and going to a lot of the meetings, it has made me, because I am a person, everything is urgent. But understanding and watching what's happening and people planning, and them saying we need a 90 day plan, we need a 120 day plan. I understand it a lot better, which in a way it helps because when people ask me, because they're used to us moving fast, and it's because we don't have to answer to anybody, you know? And it makes a big difference. And the same way we're sitting there waiting for our occupancy for our building and doing all kind of stuff. Hmm. I know that's on the, not on you, but you're trying. But I could let, uh, I want to let the world know, the Bahamas know that when, um, 
you know, you first got your position, I was like, oh my goodness, now we got to deal with somebody else. And I can't, I can't believe this because we finally got, you know, our relationship with Nima has been so good. And now we have a new minister. But I want to say thank you because you have been very, very helpful. We're working as a team. You're very reachable, which is, you know, very strange for the world today. Um, there's some people who, and you know, when I call you, you say, do you know, you know how can I help you? What I need? And we're working as a team. And that's one thing I could say that this round, I feel like it's been a lot different where it makes us move faster, better, more efficient. And like the other day I got a call and somebody said, um, there was a, a donor from the States and they said, we want to bring in some stuff. And they said, Nima said to call you guys. Oh, exactly. Good. It that's was good. huge. Good, yeah. And I was like, yeah. wow. And then the same thing when Nima says they need volunteers, can you help? They call us and we'll say, sure, we'll send out some of our volunteers. And we're working as one team, which I like, and I feel it, it's making us strong as a country. And it's showing the world, all the internationals who are here, that, hey, we can do this, and we're working, it's, we're not working against each other when it comes to the public-private. And I really appreciate that, and I thank you for coming on the show, and I feel like it's gonna happen. You know, we, we continue planning, we do things strategically, we can be awesome and build back uh, our islands better than ever. You hit on some very important points. Um, Dorian um, will not make us weak occur. Dorian is going to make us stronger. We are more, more focused now. And let me publicly say also thank you to you for your, vol your level of volunteerism. Um, this is not a, a profit-making um, exercise for you. You just are there helping. You, you, you are one of our biggest humanitarian local NGOs that we have. Um, so again, um, hats off to you and your organization. We really appreciate you because you're making major difference in our country. And now you will set a template. We're moving forward outside of NEMA and all the other aids that we have. Other organizations need, now need to step up because um, being an, a, 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 a nation of many islands, we need to have this type of, of structure in other yes, islands. Yes, on every island. On, on every island. So once again, we are, Darren is going to make us stronger. We're going to be more um, in tune with, with each other. And um, I look forward to reconstructing a better Bahamas, better built. Yes. All right, thank you so much. So everybody, that was Iron Lewis. He's giving us an update on what's going on, what his job is, what it's all about. Don't worry, Bahamas strong, HK for life. And um, stay tuned. And you stay on the NEMA page, on the headnotesfoundation.org page, our Facebook page. We keep updates. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you next week. Bye. That's her only rule. Come on into the Quality Home Center. You will see the savings from when you enter. Your one-stop department store with so much niceness. Friendly staff, great atmosphere, low prices. They got brand name appliances, furniture, hardware, electronics, home decor, toys and apparel. Shop and save. There's no need to go away. And shop at the quality home center. Home centers when less and is better. With Trio, you can get everything and more, like our phone. You get features like caller ID, call waiting, call forwarding, and a bunch of others like <coughs> virtual number. So you can now call friends and family abroad as a local call, all for free. Just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. That's her only rule. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show with me, Gina Nolts. So for my exit, you know how I always like to say my little piece of what irritated me or made me mad. And being so involved with hurricane relief and everything that's going on, you know, people, they ask me questions on the street and, you know, as they see what's going on, they watch us on, we have everything listed on the Head Knowles Foundation page. So we try to keep things updated. I want you to know it is very difficult for us to worry about social media keeping everybody updated, what donations came in, what's going out. We have a log sheet and we're keeping track, but it is, we, we, we try to keep you updated as much as possible. But please remember that because of the fact that we are going so much, it is very difficult to 
make sure everybody knows, you know, what's going on. But at any time, if you want to come and see with your own eyes and lift the box with us, we always need hands, always. So when you're off and we've decided now to close the uh, warehouse on Sundays because of the fact that we need a break and the team is getting worn out and it is always the same people who come every single day. So we realize that we have to have a break. But for my rant is when people are donating items, let me tell you something. I, I've said it before, but please be aware on what you are donated because of the fact that if you don't want it, then don't give it to us because people giving the stained clothes or clothes that you can see are 50 years old, have holes in it, or some foods that are expired, medicines expired. Come on, ma'am. That's, we got to do better than this. So at any point, if you want to come and volunteer, we can always use the help. It's always a lot of fun. And we encourage everybody to remember that we are doing this as Bahamians assisting the Bahamas. And it feels good, you know, you could bring your kids down and we stop their community service letters so they could, they could say they did their hours that they have to do each year for school. So the kids come down and a lot of the times the kids help us a lot more than adults because once we tell them to put things in certain boxes, boom, they do it. But thank you everybody who has always been with us. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Bye. That's her only rule. With Trio, you can get everything and more. Like our internet, we're taking you from 50 megabits per second download speed to 75 megabits per second. We've gone from blazing to, what's a good adjective? Breakneck blistering speeds. You're getting a 150% speed increase that if you got internet alone. Just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio. TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. That's the No Filter rule. Show is proudly sponsored by another production, BAF Financial and Insurance, Battery and Tire Alignment Specialist, Bliss Wax Boutique, Blue Lagoon, Checkers Cafe, Dairy Queen, Live to Fish, Mesa Grill, Milo Butler and Sons, Pop Star Entertainment, Oasis Shopping, Ultra Games, Sun Oil Limited, and Quality Home Center. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule.